After taking off from Hanscom Air Force Base near Boston, B-29083 heads for Los Angeles, over 3,000 miles away. Normally such a mission would be considered routine, but for this flight the pilot and crew members are not performing their usual duties. Instead, a newly developed self-contained system will fly the aircraft with the entire flight plan set in hours before actual takeoff time. For the men testing Spire, these are anxious moments. Will the system prove itself during this flight, as it did throughout exhaustive laboratory tests? Several years before this flight, a program of research and development was initiated in the Office of Air Research at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Dr. J. E. Clemens and Mr. Ben B. Johnston, who devised and researched an original idea, made a phone call to Dr. C. Stark Draper, Director of Aeronautical Research at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In accordance with previous conferences, Dr. Draper told the Wright-Patterson physicist that he and his associates were ready to start the SPIRE development program. This would be accomplished in three phases, system design, gimbal configuration, and system components. Basically, this is how SPIRE will operate. It is known that the Earth's coordinates differ from inertial space only by its rotation. With this in mind, three single degree of freedom gyros and their associated servos are employed to maintain an inertial package fixed in inertial space. This also establishes the direction of the Earth's polar axis. The inertial package is supported by an Earth reference gimbal. An associated time drive rotates the gimbal at the same angular velocity as the Earth. This maintains the Earth reference gimbal fixed with respect to the Earth. In essence, the Earth reference gimbal intersects the equatorial plane at the line of nodes axis. For each specific flight, the desired departure point and target point will determine the great circle. By proper orientation of the Earth reference gimbal, the great circle can be made to intersect the line of nodes axis. The great circle course determines the great circle plane, which contains the center of the Earth, as well as the departure vertical and the target vertical. The range axis, which is perpendicular to the great circle plane, passes through the center of the Earth. In the spire system, the range axis is established physically by the range gimbal. A vertical package consisting of range pendulum and track pendulum is mounted on the end of the range axis. The orientation of this package provides an indication of the local vertical. This track control system will control the aircraft continuously to maintain the local vertical in the plane of the great circle. A range indicating system rotates the vertical package to keep it aligned with the local vertical. Rotation of the package about the range axis provides an indication of the position along the great circle course. Track and yaw gimbals which are introduced to isolate the gimbals from aircraft motion complete the spire gimbal system. To facilitate design, a complete wooden mock-up of the spire gimbal system was constructed on a one-to-one -one scale. This mock-up contains all of the six degrees of freedom which will be employed in the final system. Two of these are coincident axes and three others provide the gimbal system with isolation from aircraft motion. The inner package which contains the three inertial gyros establishes an inertial reference. Two gimbals and the vertical package compose the analog computer for solving the geometry problems for the system. This vertical package, which remains fixed on the local vertical, carries the range to go target micro sin and the range and track accelerometers. To obtain the direction of the range axis, the line of nodes angle is introduced on a precision dial. It will have an accuracy of one second of arc and will be read by an optical bridge to eliminate eccentricity errors. 
The axes of the track isolation, range isolation, and yaw isolation gimbals will completely isolate the inner package from motions of the aircraft. The heart of the Spire system, the gyroscopes, require a performance so great that the stability and creep of metals involved in the actual wheel must be investigated. To accomplish this, a research program was undertaken at MIT to improve the stability of such metals. Further investigations included the use of the electron microscope and X-ray diffraction techniques. The precision gyroscopes used in the Spire system are floated to remove the entire weight from the bearings. This procedure will permit the use of a pivot and jewel combination in place of the conventional bearings. Friction investigations were made to ascertain the viscous and coulomb friction in the pivot and jewel combination. Recordings of the actual oscillation of the pendulous element furnish the research data required for precision machine work. After it has been machined, the gyroscope wheel is balanced to within less than 50 micro-inch ounces, assembled in the gimbal frame and mounted by precision pre-loaded ball bearings. A three-phase, 400-cycle hysteresis-type motor used to drive the wheel is mounted within the closed shell. The center of buoyancy of the floated unit must be placed coincident with the center of gravity. To accomplish this, the end-to-end -end balance of the inner assembly must be established. This is determined first in air and then again after immersion in fluid. From a combination of these two measurements, the required balance correction is determined. This outer housing of the gyro includes the required heater and thermostatic coils on one end housing. The inner float containing the wheel is inserted into the housing prior to filling. On the second end housing, a microsyn signal generator provides a signal which indicates the amount of rotation of the inner float with respect to the case. This is essentially an indication of the gyro's rotation about its input axis. After it has been degassed, the unit is evacuated, filled with a high viscosity fluid, and installed in the outer Bakelite housing. Basically, a gyroscope detects any rotation with respect to inertial space. Thus, if it is used in connection with a servo mechanism, a gyroscope can be made to hold a platform fixed with respect to inertial space. The assembled gyroscope is mounted on a test turntable that has an axis of rotation parallel with the polar axis of the Earth. A measure of the gyro's performance is determined by the degree of isolation to the Earth's rotation. By microscopic observation of the test platform, the engineer obtains a manual recording of the rotation. To investigate the effectiveness of the gyroscope, direct drive servo loop, a laboratory gimbal system was constructed. This also permitted tests and improvements of the base motion isolation system. Motion is introduced into the support gimbal to determine the effectiveness of the gyro and servo in isolating the rotation about one axis. A high-precision theotolite and optically flat mirror mounted on the inner gimbal were used to measure the degree of isolation by observing the gimbal rotation. Tests of a conventional gear drive were made, but the direct drive system was found to be far superior since it would remove rotations of the base to within seven seconds of arc. The first lab model of the direct drive torque motor was capable of delivering 11 foot-pounds of torque. In this model, the rotation of the outer frame was entirely removed and there was no visible rotation of the inner gimbal. Rotation of the earth is introduced into the gimbal by the time drive, which has an accuracy of within 20 seconds of arc. It is activated by a synchronous motor excited from a crystal control source with an accuracy of one part per million. To provide sufficient accuracy for the gimbal computation, roller bearings with a total runout of less than 40 millionths of an inch were used. Since these must also have high stiffness to reach optimum servo performance, 
oversized bearings were carefully preloaded and inserted into the gimbal system. Since each spire gimbal must be carefully balanced to achieve optimum stabilization, final balancing of the inner ones is performed on the balance ways prior to installation in the aircraft. This laboratory designed installation of the spire system consists of four major units, including the recorder, a piece of ground-based equipment used to obtain gyro calibration data, the main electronic console, and the navigational panel which is provided only for obtaining neutralized data during flight tests. Prior to a laboratory test run, line of nodes and range angles are set into the gimbal system. The line of nodes is read by a precision optical dial and viewed through an optical bridge. Precision clamps held the gimbal in the required position to prevent the introduction of rotation. Using similar techniques, the range angle is set in as an angle between the range gimbal and the vertical package. Since the package in this configuration is in the foreground, the aircraft direction of flight would be to the right. After final balancing and assembly of the gyroscope, certain residual torques remain. These are measured and set into an electronic computer, which compensates for small residual effects. Four required corrective terms for each gyro are determined from the gyro recording data. After a computation of the actual unbalanced coefficients, the values are set into the dials on the electronic computer. There are five basic modes of operation for the Spire system, and to facilitate operation in any one of these, a visible checklist is built into the system. Thus, to set Spire up for any mode of operation, the function switch is turned to that particular one. The red lights on the control panel are then switched out. This is a visible checklist, which provides maximum reliability of operation. This navigational instrument panel repeats all pertinent system information in one position, so it may be recorded conveniently by the photo observer. In this configuration, as for normal flight, the gimbal system is set so that the axis of the inertial package is lined up with the axis of the Earth. During a flight, the range drive motor will rotate the vertical package with respect to the range gimbal to keep it aligned with local vertical. A hatch was cut in the upper part of the waste compartment of B29083 to accommodate the spire system. When spire had been completely installed, the system was checked out and the aircraft lined up on the exact takeoff heading. Housed in a portable shack, a phototheotolite, recorder unit and playback unit were moved next to the aircraft to secure data for determining the gyro compensation coefficients. A 36-hour run was made with the time drive reversed and the system lined up for an erection run with the gyro set up. At the completion of the erection run, the gyros were shut down and preparations were made for a forward run in the position to be used for the actual flight. When everything was ready, another 36-hour ground run was made to check the gyros. This run ended with the gyro torque data, the actual analysis taking place on several machines during the final day and night. Everything has now been checked with the system operating for three days and the final calculations are finished. These will be set into the console just before flight time. It is the zero hour. The crew boards the Spire B-29 and makes ready for the big test in actual flight. Inside the aircraft, the coefficients for the gyro compensation computers are set into the console. Then, just before takeoff time, the portable test shack is rolled away and inside the B-29, the pilot changes the switch from erection to normal flight. The engines are started individually to accomplish a transfer of the power for takeoff. As soon as the B-29 engines are sufficiently warmed up, the rectifiers are disconnected and the aircraft is ready to accomplish a normal takeoff. The exacting program followed during this flight test was used only on the experimental system.
In the air, the pilot begins to get the aircraft on the desired course. Meanwhile, the Spire engineer in the navigation section checks his maps and coordinates with the B-29 navigator to relieve the men in the front section of all details. Now the pilot gets the aircraft on course, calculates the ground speed, and makes checkpoints which are transferred to the Spire people. The man in the bombardier's seat watches for the selected checkpoint ready to cut in. When he says, hack, the range information is set in. The pilot is now carefully flying the predetermined course. The operator at the console makes necessary adjustments on the track control drawer. He then signals the man at the navigator's paddle who pushes the button that flashes the pilot's track ready light. Then, at his discretion, the pilot pushes the button and the aircraft is under spire control. Throughout the flight, one man in the nose controls a camera that takes pictures of the ground at various checkpoints. This camera is synchronized with another in the waist, which takes pictures of the instrument panel. All pertinent data is displayed on this system panel and a comparison with the pictures of each checkpoint will furnish a comprehensive record of the flight. Even though extreme turbulence was encountered over the Rocky Mountains during this first flight, Spire performed beautifully to prove that all the precision work in the laboratory had paid off. The pilot shows his confidence in the system in a graphic manner. Finally, the light comes on over the target and the 3,000 mile flight has demonstrated that the Air Force has a self-contained system which will guide pilotless aircraft to any spot on Earth.